please subscribe. Yeah, baby. June 1st, 1987. 21-year-old Tammy Holt and 23-year-old Jennifer Northern were sound asleep in the front of their home on Jim Sturchy Road. Suddenly, they're disturbed by a ruckus on the front porch. The girls panic. Holt telephones authorities. Northern grabs a 12-gauge shotgun. The 911 dispatcher listens as the ruckus escalates. Threats and loud banging on the door permeate the silent night. The girls and the dispatcher hear someone scream. He has a knife. He has a knife. Several times. Suddenly, an unidentified female yanks the screen door open. Northern fires the shotgun towards the door. The bullet penetrates the unknown female's skull. She drops to the ground. She is killed instantly. Despite relentless attempts by law enforcement and amateur sleuths, the woman remains unidentified. She is referred to as Shotgun Jane Doe. She does not have a name. What would follow would be one of the most extensive investigations in Knoxville history. Are you the one who can help break the case? Join us tonight as we retell the mysterious unidentified case of Shotgun Jane Doe. shotgun female? This is the very question that remains on the minds of many in Knoxville, Tennessee. The story begins with an innocent man attempting to do the right thing. On Sunday morning, 76-year-old Percy Preston Jr. of Bristol, Virginia was traveling alone. He spotted three hitchhikers and decided to give them a ride. Two men and a woman jumped into his 1977 Chevrolet Impala. The hitchhikers eventually commandeered the vehicle. Then they drove around Knoxville for most of the day. At 1.30 a.m. on Monday, police found Percy at a rest area in Greene County. His car and wallet were missing. The elderly man was ill and confused. He could not remember where he picked up the hitchhikers or how he got to the rest area. As for the hitchhikers, their journey was just getting started. Around 2.30 a.m., Percy's and Pallet parked near a home at 6512 Jim Sturchy Road. Jennifer Northern and Tammy Hope hear a disturbance outside. It sounds like a fight. Hope grabs the phone and calls 911. Northern screams at the unknown individuals to get off the porch. Someone outside screams, He has a knife! He has a knife! Four or five times. Northern hears the screen door open and fires in its direction. The blast tears through the door and hits an unidentified female on the forehead. The two men scatter. Percy's car was discovered approximately two blocks from the scene of the shooting. The victim was described as being in her early 20s, 5'6", and weighing around 100 pounds. She was wearing a Miami's Dolphin jersey and light blue athletic pants. An inexpensive silver chain was wrapped around her left wrist. White socks and gray and white striped tennis shoes covered her feet. An investigation was initiated immediately. Within days, investigators had two suspects. 35-year-old John Calvin McCarter lived on Dry Gap Road. He was charged with attempted robbery and conspiracy to commit robbery. McCarter lived in a trailer near the home he intended to rob. Shirley Sue Ferguson, or Spivey, was also arrested. She was charged with larceny for stealing money from 76-year-old Percy Preston Jr. McCarter gave police the name of the other hitchhiker, 30-year-old Jerry Lynn Brown. The men were unable 
are unwilling to tell detectives much about Jane Doe. Tina and Illinois were both mentioned during interviews. However, it was unknown if the woman was Tina from Illinois or if she was visiting Tina in Illinois. The unidentified woman's body proved to be a treasure trove of evidence. It was discovered that the woman had sustained multiple injuries during her short time. She had a crushed vertebrae that probably caused her pain. She also had healed fractures of the clavicle, right and left tibia bones, and fibula. The fibula was secured by a metal plate manufactured by Synthesis. A horizontal scar on the woman's abdomen led detectives to believe she might have undergone an emergency C-section. The injuries were thought to be medical issues or accidents, not abuse. An amateurish tattoo, BH, was found on her upper left arm. She had brown hair, brown eyes. A toxicology report revealed that the Jane Doe had a blood alcohol level of 0.13%. She was missing a lower front tooth as well. Despite these distinguishing features, this Jane Doe was never identified. The woman's companions were charged in her death, but those charges were later dropped. The men denied attempting to rob the home. However, they confessed that they picked up the unidentified woman at a rest stop on Interstate 81. According to them, they never learned the woman's name. As for Jennifer Northern, she was eventually cleared. It was determined that she was acting in self-defense. After all, she had been robbed just recently and wasn't going to let it happen again. Despite the evidence that came to light, the question remained, who was Jane Doe? Nearly 250 individuals have been excluded as potential matches. There are plenty of theories as to what might have happened and who she might have been. Shirley Sue Ferguson was ultimately charged with larceny for stealing Percy Preston. She might have been with McCarter and Brown when they hijacked Percy's vehicle. Authorities believe that Jane Doe was picked up at a rest area near Bulls Gap, Tennessee. Was the kidnapped Percy dropped off when the two men kidnapped Jane Doe? Was she a willing participant in the attempted robbery? The kidnapping theory is given additional credence by the fact that Jane Doe's wallet and identification were never discovered. Maybe the men just threw it away later on. Did they know more than they were telling? Was Jane Doe ever reported missing? After all, she had an amateur tattoo and might have been incarcerated at some point in her past. Was she a prostitute or a victim of human trafficking? Sadly, we may never know. However, someone out there knows something. It could be a childhood memory of a long lost friend or a relative who disappeared. That memory may one day break the case wide open. Someday, Jane Doe may finally receive a proper name. Would be a shame if you didn't watch another video before you go.